I'm going to focus on uh, something that didn't get much attention. Uh, during the days when we were practicing a lot, I just mentioned, I read about it from time to time, but never really uh, took time to, in, to explore it. Uh, it it's, they're called the eight worldly winds. The eight worldly winds. Yeah? Yeah. And um, some of the currents uh, in life that, that we are that we are subject to that we're all subject to. I know in my own in my own practice, I used to think, oh, yeah, but that's not really about the Dharma. That's the world. That's about the world. That's about samsara. You know, that's about the world, and the Dharma is about something else. And never the twain shall meet, or they don't meet here. I, you know, this, how could there possibly be anything meaningful in, the, in about the Dharma and the eight worldly winds? But actually, the Buddha had quite quite a lot to say about it. Uh, had quite a lot to say about it, and um, and in particular, what he suggested was that these are not <coughs> things that we can uh, totally transcend. This is one of the difficult messages in in meditation practice because we come to the practice really uh, with a couple of agendas, and it's good as soon as possible to recognize these agendas as part of our practice. It took me so long to even see them as, as part of our, our agenda. And one of them is to, um, to transcend some things. I think if I meditate, I will get be totally beyond some things, in particular, some of the things that I don't like about myself. You know, uh, I'll get beyond them. I'll leapfrog right completely over them. The other is that, well, They'll, they'll, they'll just kind of be in the rear view mirror or they just won't, they won't, they'll somehow just fit, completely fade away, you know? <clears throat> I'll, I can just avoid them. I can just not look at them at all. <clears throat> and the, um, unfortunately, neither of these actually has come true in my own experience. I've had to find, realize it's not really about that. It's about making a relationship. It's actually about mm -hmm. turning toward some of the things that I wished I never would have to turn toward. Yeah. So this is what the Buddha has to say about this. <clears throat> okay. This is from, this is a, mm. from the Loka Vipati Sutta. <clears throat> Monks, you know, a lot of the suttas, you know, that's the way it is. He, he, of course, he's, there are nuns as well these days. He, 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 monks, these eight worldly conditions spin after the world, and the world spins after these eight worldly conditions. Which eight? Gain, loss. There are four pairs. Gain and loss. Status and lack of status or disgrace. Praise and blame or censure. pleasure and pain, or happiness and suffering. These are the eight worldly conditions that spin after the world, and the world spins after these eight worldly conditions. For those of you who've ever read suttas, there's this repetition. And then sometimes you get into the, come on, let's get on with it. What's the theme, you know? And that, there's our, there goes our mind again, wanting to get the quick, give me the, give me the, um, the cliff notes, okay? Give me the cliff notes. That's not the way it was done in those days, the cliff notes. Now, here it goes. For an uninstructed, run-of-the-mill person, I always used to hate it when the Buddha would say this. You know, sometimes we'd say, for one with an untrained mind, untrained, I, I always think, oh, I'm not untrained. <laughs> or for the uninstructed, run-of-the-mill person, I'm not an uninstructed, run-of-the-mill person, you know? Took me about 20 years to realize I am an uninstructed <laughs> run-of-the-mill person. I'm not one of those slower students the Buddha talked about. I go to the head of the class. No, I am one of those slower students the Buddha talked about. Yeah, this says for an uninstructed run-of-the-mill person, there arise gain and loss, all eight of them. It's that status, disgrace, censure, you know, da, 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 da. Now here's where it gets interesting. However, for a well-instructed disciple of the noble ones, there also arise gain and loss, status and, and, and disgrace, censure and praise, pleasure and pain. You know, 
We've heard, we've spoken with monks, by the way, who say, you know, you all have some fantasies about what goes on in a monastery. You know, let me tell you, let me take you behind the curtain a little bit and, and show you know, look, this stuff is still in play. Yeah, it's still in play. It's part of our psyche. It's part of our deep wiring. Yeah, we don't get rid of these things. They are part of the currents that, that, that of life, you know, and we're all subject to them. Darn it. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and then, um, and then, and then, and, and then the question is, well, what distinct, what's the distinguishing factor then between the uh, well-instructed disciple and the uh, uninstructed <laughs> run-of-the-mill person? Love that, run-of-the-mill person. Well, in this case, monks, pay, listen and pay close attention. I will speak. Okay, as you say, <clears throat> The gain arises for an uninstructed run-of-the-mill person. And when that arises, he does not reflect, gain has arisen for me. It is in inconstant, stressful, and subject to change. He does not discern it as it actually is. Loss arises, and he does not reflect, loss has arisen, etc., etc. His mind remains consumed with the gain his mind remains consumed with the loss. Yeah, there's a key here, right? It's the consumption. <clears throat> this is the difference. The same with, well, what is the difference? It's when we're really grasping, really clinging, really wanting more. I've, I, I, I know, and I have worked with people. Also, maybe you know people who have so much money. I've worked with a couple of millionaires who are so worried about losing a little bit of money, it doesn't help. And they're always trying to cons consider, how can I make more? How can I make more? Unfortunately, we have, we're, we're in a capitalist society who takes advantage of this wiring in us. I said, no, we are a, a, lot, a consumer society. Well, <clears throat> and a society of the self. And we, there's that sense of, well, we must have more, bigger house, bigger car, et cetera, et cetera. Look, we know, how, we know how this can play out. More millionaires than ever before in Western culture now, right? Great. <clears throat> I won't go down too far down that road. But this notion of, uh, of gain and loss, gain and loss in gross ways, but in subtle ways too, right? That sense of um, wanting always a little bit more, something's a little bit other. It's not quite enough. I don't have quite enough. There's always that, that leaning forward into, we're almost there, but <clears throat> I wanna keep getting, I wanna get more, and then I wanna keep that gain safe. And I do not want any of that to decay, to be lost, you know? <clears throat> a noble one, well-instructed, who's not run-of-the-mill, does not remain consumed with the gain. His mind does not remain consumed with the loss. He does not welcome the arisen gain or rebel against the arisen loss. Yeah? It's beginning to loosen our grip a little bit. But to look closely, to see where we're holding tightly to see where we're holding tightly, to see how that it feels to be holding really tightly to some of the things that we hold on to. It's being willing to take a look at that. I used to just not want to look at some of this. I thought this is just the worldly stuff. I'm, no, no, I'm gonna go on retreat and I don't have to deal with it. No, this is part of it. And this is part of, of integrating this practice into our lives. The willingness to take a closer look. Where am I squeezing so tightly? you know, that it's creating extra pain, extra stress. Hmm? You know, where, where am I, where am I afraid of loss? Loss is painful. Not getting what we want is, is part of dukkha. Not getting what we want. Getting what we want and having it not last is part of dukkha. You know, you know, it's a question of looking more carefully at that. Can we lighten up? Can we begin to lighten up a little bit more around some of this, you know?
Because at the end of the day, um, we must make a relationship with some of these um, huge currents of, of, of life. And it is our strong, strong attachment to them that, that creates a, a fair amount of our distress. Uh, when Susan and I think of enlightenment now, even we think of, oh, so much a part of it is lightening up, just lightening up, yeah? lightening up where we're so tight where we're holding on so much. It's the real squeeze. We'll often say, you know, gripping the steering wheel tighter doesn't get us there any faster. And yet we're wired to grip. We're wired to grip. And so um, the first of these four pairs is gain and loss and beginning to see that, beginning to see how it plays out in us. Yeah. And beginning to see where we can loosen our grip just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah since we are also swimming in a world of impermanence and radical impermanence and change. Yeah? Yeah. And it comes up in our meditation too, and we'll move now to practice together. We begin to see some of the subtle ways in which we wanna to move toward gain and away from loss. You know, even a really, a, a really sweet mind state arises, which is lovely, we like those. <laughs> and even, in, uh, we, and we're orienting a little bit toward creating a, a, you know, a comfortable space in here. But then there can be, oh, oh, and this still goes on for me, not as much as it used to, I smile, you know, this, oh, oh, this is it, this is it, okay, okay. How do I hold on to this now? I don't wanna lose this. You know, it's okay, this is part of our wiring, you know? This is part of what does arise and we need to learn to smile with a little bit as well. See, it's not about getting rid of, oh, I shouldn't have that thought. I shouldn't, why shouldn't I? Of course we should have that thought. Of course that thought's going to arise. We want the sweetness. We want the balance. We want the ease, you know, when it arises. But how do we do that in a way that we hold, hold lightly? The light, the light touch, the lighter touch around gain and loss. You know, as best we can, easier said than done. This is a practice. This is a practice. We're all run of the mill. We're all run of the mill uh, folks here who are doing some, are practicing, practicing to move toward um, less suffering and more ease in our lives in this world, in this world on fire. Yeah.